Okay, so we're going to be working on a two column solution to this. As you can see, it has these marks here indicating that these two lines are parallel. So whenever you see two parallel lines like this on a figure where you're trying to find something, it usually means you're going to end up using um, one of those theorems associated with uh, parallel lines in a transversal. You know, things like alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles. Um, expect that to come into play in figuring things out. So what I'm going to do first, as always, is I'm going to write down my givens. So I'm just going to simply copy those right up here. And then there's something else. Um, it, the figure indicates that these are parallel, but it doesn't say it. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write, and there's a couple of ways to do it. Probably the easiest way is to call this a line. So this, I get a lot of questions on this, like how do I write it? Um, is it a segment? Is it a line? You should write it as a line. It just makes it a lot easier. Um, but I'm, I can call this line here, I can call this CB. I could call it CG. It doesn't matter as long as I talk about where it starts and where it ends. I could also call it BG or you know BC. It doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to talk about this line right here. What most people will do is grab the endpoints on either end of it. So CG, and you put these two lines like this, that means it's parallel to WX. And I'm going to put with transversal which is this line crossing the two parallel lines, I'm going to call it um, FZ. And that's given. So this is really important to state in your givens because it, it opens up all of those possibilities in terms of the angle relationships that are associated with parallel lines in a transversal. You can use that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, what it tells me. So WXZ, so WXZ is this guy down here. And I know, as far I need to figure out this up here, which is ABC. So I need to somehow get a number from way over here, over here. And the quickest way to do that is the alternate um, exterior, which means this one is alternate exterior with this FBC one up here. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So this one here is equal to this angle here. And that is the alternate exterior angle theorem. That's how I know that that's true. Now I'm going to substitute. So when you substitute, we know that this one here is 40. So that's going to be 40. So then all I got to do is pop a 40 in there. That's substitution. And I now know what the measure of that angle is. Okay, so I also know um, FBA, which is that one there. So I know that this angle here plus this ABC angle is equal to the FBC. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. So angle FBA plus the measure of angle um, ABC is equal to the measure of angle FBC which is this one we just figured out. So we know this one here has a value of 40, just like the one over here, right? We now know that um, FBA up here is 26. So what I'm going to do is rewrite that where I substitute the values in. Okay, so that is, um, uh, oh, so um, adjacent angle sum postulate, not adjacent, angle sum postulate says that these two angles add up to the bigger one, so that's why I wrote that. On this one right here, at the substitution I used, and then the very last one, all I got to do is reverse this, so 40 minus 26 is 14 degrees, and that is the subtraction property of equality. Okay, and that's what I set out to find, so that's how you do it.